I am Scott. Welcome back to Canard Boulevard. Today is a very cold day here in the hangar. I think it's about 20 degrees and we're on the cusp of a polar vortex. The temperature is falling rapidly. It uh, will be by this time tomorrow about minus 5 Fahrenheit, which is about minus 20 Celsius. Far too cold to be working in the hangar. The plan for today, I've got two things to do. One, I'm going to take this lower cow off and I'm going to take that home so that I can get started on the uh, boat tail reform at the back. And uh, I'll talk about that in another video. I mentioned it in the last video. We'll get into it when I actually start working on it. I just need to get this home so that I can do it. Can't do glass work in the, in the hangar when it's you know, way below freezing. I do have a vehicle outside to transport that in. When I took the upper cowl home, I brought my RV, my own motor home, because it has lots of space and I could take a great big cowl and put it inside. My wife had a Ford Transit Connect van and uh, we had to get rid of it because the transmission in those vans apparently just are not designed very well. It has this eight-speed Ford transmission that fails about every 40,000 miles. The van had it replaced once already at 40,000 miles when it failed uh, under warranty. And now the van had 80,000 miles and it was starting to do the exact same thing, slipping, hard changing, and so on. All the symptoms of the failing transmission that require replacement. Ford wants $8,500 to replace that transmission. So I decided it was time to get rid of that vehicle. So we have a new vehicle which is this uh, Mazda CX-5, fantastic. I love this, this car. Uh, it's great in the snow, all-wheel drive. It does not have as much room in the back as the old Transit Connect. So I did some measurements, and I'm hoping that the cowl will fit in the back of that with the seats down. We're, we're going to find out. But before we get to that, I have a new product that I bought that uh, we're going to unbox. And that product is a dry bot. A dry bot is a engine dryer. So basically what it does is it takes air from here, from inside the hangar, it sucks all the moisture out of it, and then it puts it into the engine. And by doing so, displaces any moisture that is in the engine to prevent corrosion. So with this running on your engine, your engine corrosion, the chance of corrosion happening inside your engine goes to pretty much zero. So how it works, it has a desiccant bed, which is a, a set of beads that absorb moisture from the air. It runs the air through that and then into the engine. I mean, you can buy desiccant beads and, and an aquarium pump and build one yourself. The problem is that the desiccant beads absorb the moisture, and when they've got a certain amount of moisture in them, they stop absorb, absorbing moisture, and now you're pumping moist air into your engine. Not good. So how the dry bot works, and the reason they call it a bot is because it has intelligence in there. It's got heaters and, and uh, pumps and so on and valves, so that after it has been running for a while, it knows the desiccant bed is used up. It turns on some heaters, runs air backwards through the bed to basically bake the moisture out of the desiccant beads, which is the same thing you would do if you built your own. You take desiccant beads, you take it home, put it in your oven for a while, heat them up, all the moisture comes out, and you put it back. This thing does it automatically, and it, it has computers in there that times it and so on. So basically, it's a plug and play, just plug it in and forget and you don't have to worry about recharging your desk and beads or basically anything. You just hook it up, plug it in, and it goes, and it keeps the air going through your engine dry. I'm going to unbox it and hook it up just to see how it looks. I'm not going to test it today because the relative humidity right now is very close to zero. Uh, even though there's a lot of snow outside and it's actually snowing right now, the relative humidity is not enough that it's going to have a huge amount of effect, but in Ohio here, the temperature rapidly goes up and down all the time, and we get temperature swings, humidity swings. In the summer, it gets very humid. So once we do get some warmer weather, I will put some instrumentation on it, and we'll see just how much moisture it's removing out of the air, and also how much moisture is actually in the engine after it's been running for a bit. I'm really interested to see, after the airplane has flown, the amount of moisture in the engine because there's going to be a ton because remember you have that blow by into the crankcase and that blow by from the combustion contains a lot of water vapor so after you've flown your airplane there's a lot of water vapor in the engine and i want to see how quickly and effectively the dry bot evacuates that moisture out of the engine and keeps it out so that'll be interesting to do obviously a few months away from being able to do that but in the meantime i'm going to take the lower cowl off and once i've done that then we'll 
unpack the dry bot and hook it up and, and get a look at it. Oh, and I forgot my gloves at home, so my fingers are already frozen. This is, this is gonna be fun. All right, the cowl is off. My hands are absolutely frozen. There's nothing like uh, using metal tools that are way below freezing. If you imagine reaching into your freezer and taking out metal tools and then using them, trying to use your fingers, this is not fun. I forgot my gloves and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely regretting it. All right, so here is the dry bot. Let's unpack it, hook it up, see how it works. Pose. And then here's the unit itself. The adapter, power cord. So they have different adapters that uh, fit into different airplanes. This one is an L2, which should be for this Lycoming engine. Well, my camera just died. I have a feeling it's because it got too cold. But uh, in any case, so this goes in through your oil fill port. So the idea is that you unscrew your dipstick here. I'll just clean that off as I do. And then this adapter piece that you pick based on the type of fill port that you have should screw in there in its place. And you can see it has a uh, it looks like a nitrile seal or something on there. And hopefully that's just going to screw right in there, and it does. So that's perfect. That's an L2 for this engine. And now the hose can just go on the end of that. So you put this clamp over the end of the hose, and then the hose goes on to the barb. Like that. And then you put the clamp on there, which is probably really not needed, but... Maybe in the summer when it's a little warmer, you might need that. And it does come with this uh, quick start guide that basically just says plug the hose in there and then it has some status lights on there. Tells you how to hook it up and what all the different status lights mean. So you can see it's normally operating. If it's a uh, yellow light on, then it's regenerating. And if there's red, then you got a problem. So you can see the different uh, codes that flash red if there's a problem. So. Um, it says don't worry if it makes a gurgling sound and so on. Hot air and steam are pumped through the bottom of the dry bot during the regeneration cycle. Don't place it on surfaces that may be damaged by elevated temperatures or water. And the external surfaces may get hot during the regeneration process. Okay, so I do need to put it on something in here. I was going to put it on this plastic bin. But apparently that's not going to work, so I've got a uh, metal platform that I'm going to put it on instead because I don't want it sitting on the floor in case it floods in here, which it has happened once before. Not really a flood, but, you know, half inch of water on the ground. All right, this is a uh, Harbor Freight stand for a, um, a saw or something. I bought it to use to prop up the uh, nose of the airplane when I'm working on the, the nose gear, and it works well for that, but it'll also work well for this purpose. So let's open this up. As we can see, we have a uh, ISA port in the back there, power switch. At the front, we just have where the hose hooks in and then our status lights on the front. So pretty simple. So let's hook this up and get it going. Actually, I figured it makes more sense if I bring the hose, because the hose is fairly long. So if I bring the hose over across the top of the wing, and then I can have it set up over here. I may set up just a little table or something that I'll, I'll make for it over here. And uh, that way I don't need to use this stand for that. But uh, yeah, the, the hose is plenty long enough for that. So now if I can get this protective thing off. There we go, hose clamp.
And then the power cord, which is very cold and very stiff right now. Plug in, and then turn it on. All right, lights are flashing. I guess that means it's starting up and doing something. And now it says running. I hear it doing something. I hear a little pump inside running. So I assume that means there's air coming out, which is a good thing. And yes, if I uh, put this up here, you can actually hear air coming out of here. So it is pushing air through into the engine. So I'll screw this back in. All right, so now we have dry air running into the engine, which is a nice thing, a good thing. All right, the dry bot is running. I need to get a little something, a little metal something for it to sit on down here. And uh, the cord is fine where it is, and I'll remove this sand. And it doesn't use a whole lot of power. I think it's a, I'll have a look in the uh, original documentation as to what kind of power it uses, but it's nowhere near the power that a heater draws. So that's the dry bot. Now I've got to get the cowl into my car, hopefully, and uh, get the heat on and head on home and get back to work on fiberglassing cowls. Well, that worked all right. Got it in there, just barely, with about uh, three or four inches to spare. Should be able to get that home, no problem at all. I did, while carrying it, identified that I found, a, it was one around one of these exhaust cutouts that I found a crack, so I, I'm going to have to do some rework on the, this cowl because it does need a little bit of help. That's enough for this video. need to get back in the car, get back warmed up, uh, get the, the cowling home, and get to work on glass, fiberglass work. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of video, hey, click like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. When you do that, it's so cold in here, I'm having trouble talking, believe it or not. So time to go. Thanks for watching.